What do clinicians mean when they use the term metabolic health? Well, if you're in the health and fitness space, the term metabolic health might seem self-explanatory, but I've had many clients and social media followers ask me over the years what it actually means. While there's no single globally agreed upon definition, the concept of metabolic health encompasses several key aspects. Speaking from a dietitian's perspective, metabolic health refers to how efficiently the body carries out its metabolic processes, converting food into energy, regulating our blood sugar and insulin levels, managing cholesterol and blood pressure, and supporting overall physiological balance. So what actually defines metabolic health? Well, there are a few key indicators we typically like to look at. Well, first up, it's blood sugar levels. Having normal fasting glucose and good insulin sensitivity is really important. It helps reduce the risk of developing prediabetes or type 2 diabetes. And poor control in this area can significantly increase our cardiovascular risk. Second is your lipid profile. So this generally refers to your cholesterol and triglyceride levels. So we'll often hear about LDL cholesterol or the bad cholesterol and HDL, which is the good cholesterol, but there's a lot more to the story, especially when it comes to predicting heart disease. So let's briefly break this down. First up is LDL particle size and number. So not all LDL is equally harmful. Small, dense LDL particles are more atherogenic, which means they're more likely to cause plaque buildup rather than the large fluffy ones. So testing LDL particle number or your LDLP or your APOB, and that's a capital B, can give you more insight than just testing your total LDL cholesterol alone. Next is apolipoprotein B. So this is a structural protein found on atherogenic particles like LDL, VLDL, which is very low density lipoproteins, and IDL or intermediate density lipoproteins. Elevated APOB is now considered one of the most accurate predictors of cardiovascular disease because it reflects the total number of harmful particles. Next, we have lipoprotein A. So this is a genetically inherited lipoprotein that's structurally very similar to LDL, but it includes a sticky protein called apolipoprotein A. High levels are strongly associated with increased risk of heart disease and stroke independent of all other cholesterol markers. And the last one we like to look at is triglyceride to HDL ratio. So a high ratio, for example, over two to one in terms of micromoles per liter, can indicate insulin resistance and elevated cardiovascular risk, even when your LDL appears normal. Now, one of my roles as a dietitian and exercise professional is to design and guide an evidence-based dietary strategy for clients that specifically help target those lipoprotein levels and quality. The next key indicator of metabolic health is blood pressure. So keeping systolic and diastolic blood pressure in a healthy range reduces the strain on your arteries and it lowers the risk of heart disease and stroke. Now, a healthy, normal blood pressure is generally defined as having systolic pressure less than 120 millimeters of mercury and a diastolic pressure less than 80 millimeters of mercury. Now, for a little bit of background, the systolic pressure is when your heart beats and the diastolic pressure is when your heart rests between beats. Both of those numbers matter, but the elevated systolic pressure, especially as you get older, is much more strongly linked to cardiovascular risk. In fact, much of the work that we do with our patients through diet and lifestyle modification is intended to help maintain healthy blood pressure. Now, next, there's body composition. So rather than focusing only on body weight on the scale, we often look at the distribution of fat or just having a healthy ratio of muscle to fat, especially visceral fat, which is the fat that surrounds our organs and tends to disrupt our metabolic processes. Now, muscle mass also matters here as it helps improve our insulin sensitivity and our resting metabolic rate. In fact, this lean tissue is one of the greatest drivers of improved metabolic function. So we also look at inflammation. So lower levels of chronic or systemic inflammation are linked to better metabolic outcomes and a reduced risk of chronic illness. 
chronic low-grade inflammation contributes to insulin resistance, atherosclerosis, and metabolic dysfunction. Markers like HSCRP or high-sensitivity C-reactive protein are often used to help evaluate their patients' and clients' inflammation related to cardiovascular risk. Now, hormonal balance is also another piece of the puzzle. So hormones like insulin, leptin, and ghrelin, cortisol, and thyroid hormone all influence everything from appetite regulation to energy metabolism and our fat storage. So imbalances here can contribute to metabolic dysfunction. And the final key indicator is lifestyle factors. Consistent movement, a diet rich in whole, nutrient-rich foods, quality sleep, and effective stress management all play a powerful role in supporting metabolic health. These are all highly modifiable lifestyle factors, and they form the foundation of the behavior change work I focus on with my clients. So in short, metabolic health is not just about looking fit or having normal labs. It's about how well your body regulates energy, your hormones, it maintains balance, and protects you against chronic disease. Now, if you're looking for personalized support to get stronger, build muscle, improve your fitness, and just feel your healthiest, not just physically, but mentally too, then my one-on-one -on -one coaching is designed to guide you through this. Now, you can also explore a range of my coaching programs and training resources tailored to help you move with confidence, train smarter, and fuel your body for real lasting results. So if this sounds like you, then check out the links in the description of this video. I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you in my next video.